We're going back to van life in the U.S. after more than two months abroad. How is it? It's cold. While we've been living out of backpacks, our van has been stored in Las Vegas, Nevada, with the hopes that it'll be safe in our absence. We're feeling a lot of excitement about being reunited with our home, but we're also anxious to see if it's still where we left it, and if anything melted or got damaged after spending so much time in the Las Vegas summer heat. I can't believe we're back here and it's finally time to go pick up our van. There's a lot that could go wrong here. You know, worst case scenario, the van isn't where we left it. Best case scenario is that nothing happened to it. But I think what I'm worried about is what's in between, you know, break-ins, dead batteries. Vegas is a nice place to leave it because it's so dry here that we didn't have to worry too much about mold and things weren't gonna freeze. But on the other hand, we left it in Vegas in the summer and we saw temperatures go up to 115 degrees multiple days in a row. So yeah. I really hope nothing's like melted. I don't know. I'm just so excited to see our van. I feel like if we have to rebuild the whole thing, I'm fine with it. I'm just happy to be back. What was that jump? <laughs> This is really heavy. It's probably like 30 pounds. Wait. <laughs> Our mood does not fit this environment at all. We are way too happy. I know. I feel like when people come to a storage unit facility. Don't look, don't look. Oh, okay. It's right there. I think there. we're really close. But I feel like when people come to a storage unit facility, they're usually kind of dealing with chores and they're not really happy. But Jimmy and I are like over the moon, super nervous and excited. I feel like we're like gonna go see an old friend. All right, you ready to walk go. around the corner? Yeah, one, two, two three. Wow, you counted wrong. All right, one, two, three, go. <laughs> oh, I thought it'd be closer. I see the windows on the back. Dirtier than I remember. Yeah, we didn't clean up very well. Yeah, everything's exactly where we left it. I feel like I never left. All right, I'm checking. It says our batteries are at a hundred percent. Really? Yeah. It also says the solar uh, panels are getting 24 watts right now. So that I, explains it. <laughs> I think it must be coming in. So I feel like it's perfect. We found a shaded uh, parking spot so that our van doesn't get fried, but I think we left the tail of it just enough in the sun where our house batteries wouldn't go dead. I don't know about our starter batteries. I'm a little nervous about actually starting the van. The fact that it unlocked with the remote is a good sign, isn't it? Yeah, that's a really good sign. Yeah. Yeah. So far, so good. <laughs> see if I remember how to do this. Let's see, this one goes to the charger. Turn that one on. Oh, I heard uh, fans turn on. That's the fridge. Go ahead. Yay. I'm sure that doesn't show up on camera at all, but they're on. <laughs> now you can see them. Oh, you can? Oh. I'm just expecting everything to be broken or smelly or rotten, but like, I think we did a good job cleaning everything out. I think it looks pretty good. What are you doing? Hugging. I'm hugging. hugging. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just as small as I left it. <laughs> love you. I love you, Jimmy. We're never leaving the van again. <laughs> so we've checked everything over, and so far nothing has drastically gone wrong. But there is one final, arguably the most crucial step, and that's checking to make sure that the van itself will start. I'm procrastinating. We've been burned by the bus so yeah. much that like, I don't trust the van all the way. Yeah. All right. All right, here we go. Look at that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh yeah, we're due for an oil change. I forgot about that. Oh yeah. Oh gosh, we should probably do that like today. Like this feels weird. I, I, it's something we try not to let ourselves talk about on camera too much while we we're in Europe, but like we did miss the van. Um, we love backpacking and it's something that we'll probably do in the future again. Uh, but like, I think the van is just where our home is and we were gone from it for too long. Yeah, the van is so comfortable and we've really missed it. So we got a small plan of what to do for today. Um, we'll take you along and uh, I think it basically is just trying to get the van back up and running to its full potential. Yeah, um, we tried to build in a lot of um, flexibility in our schedule to handle any kind of catastrophe that the van might throw at us. Mm -hmm. So far we're looking pretty good, but um, 
I'm just, I'm still prepared to like deal with something. <laughs> Our first stop is gonna to be to go and refill our water. Our water tank looks pretty clear, so I think we're just gonna fill it up. We might drink out of water bottles for the next couple days just to be extra cautious in case there's anything like in our water. We don't have health insurance after all, so I'd rather not get sick. But I think our first step is just to go to this place we found on iOverlander and get some water. Yeah, it's literally a black screen right now, too. Really? <laughs> yeah. Have it now. Oh, you look like you're telling me a ghost story. <laughs> the ghost story is we're filling up water at a dog park and it's a little spooky here. <laughs> the next day, we were so excited to be back that we got super fixated on taking care of the van. I cleaned all the dust off the fans. Jimmy reorganized all of our storage compartments. We filled our empty fridge with more than a week's worth of groceries. <laughs> and we even took pancake for a syrup change. But the mechanic didn't quite know what that meant, so we just got her an oil change instead. It's like, we're really packed together. Should I go this way? I guess so, yeah. Like, I just don't know what's road and what's a campsite. Bit hilly. It is a little bit hilly. Is that okay? Yeah, probably fine. Our first night back in the van went off pretty much without a hitch. We're just so excited and grateful to be back. We fell asleep almost immediately. I don't think we realized how tired we were. <laughs> Pretty much everything is working fine. There's no major catastrophes. Um, the van started, nothing seems to have melted. There is one thing that we aren't sure if it's like a big issue yet or if it's just something really small. We're gonna get into that later. We'll explain it and sh show you what, what we're worried about. But uh, first, we wanna leave this campsite. It's very pretty here. We're in like the deserts of Utah and it's fall and it's just the perfect weather. But we are right next to the road. Like so close that if a car were to run off the road, they would be in our campsite. So we're gonna go find a slightly better place and um, hopefully get a little bit more comfortable and get set up for a couple days of off-grid camping. We left the Vegas, Nevada area and we've been kind of heading east. So we're in Utah right now. We're gonna stay somewhere really, really close to Bryce Canyon. This place is gorgeous. Southern Utah is like extremely unique. You've got like red rock desert and you've also got forest. Uh, it's probably one of our favorite places ever. So hopefully we can find a good spot and hopefully like it's not just super crowded because the weather here is amazing and it's the weekend, so. We might be pushing our luck a bit. We've just arrived at our campsite and Natalie was not lying when she said how beautiful it is here. It's so nice here. <laughs> it's like 70 degrees, hardly anyone else is out here, and we've got just like so much space to ourselves. We came in through that way, and honestly, I only saw one or maybe two other people camping here. We have everything else to ourselves. I and, just love being in the trees. And we okay. might. And we might honestly have the best site here. Yeah, I think we might. There's one other site that might be a little bit prettier than ours, but it's at the end of the road. So if anyone comes down and decides to turn around, they're driving through your campsite to do it. So I think we have the best spot. <laughs> it looks like it's about to storm. 
this might be the absolute worst time for this um, but we are really due for a shower and so we're going to use our outdoor shower in quotes um, we don't really have one and so we just spin our sink faucet outside and use that um, we've only done it a handful of times and it's honestly not too bad the problem is today is that it's getting later and later so it's getting colder and colder and we just felt raindrops so honestly we might not even need the shower <laughs> oh yeah um we told you guys that there was something we weren't sure if it was working totally properly when we came back and that's our water heater um really bad time to have to troubleshoot that but we'll give it a test i guess this is gonna be so cold no it's fine it's, it's okay the water heater i think is working but there's something clogging the hose because the hot water is really spurty when it comes out the cold water is totally fine it's just the hot is like struggling all right are you guys you got everything yeah i'm ready this is gonna be so cold all right ready yeah how is it it's cold it's not it's not warmed up yet oh all right, the water's warm. There you go. It's just a cold day to be doing this. <laughs> oh, I don't, the water's like coming all in. It is? Yeah. Oh, it's blowing in? Oh, yeah. I think the wind is just blowing the water back into the van. Uh, you need some more? Yes, please. I don't know how much you can see it on camera, but I think something's basically clogged inside of the hot water heater because every time we turn on the hot water, it's uh, really inconsistent and it kind of sputters. Honestly, I think this is probably the best thing for it because I just want to run it at full blast and kick the water out and see if we can dislodge whatever's in there. Um, but I don't want to do that inside because we have a six gallon tank and I don't want to waste water too. So this is a perfect chance to actually try to fix it. And I say fix it lightly. I'm gonna change out of the... Oh, it's so cold. And I dropped my towel in the dirt, so now it's all muddy. I don't want to psych you out, but it's really cold. Oh my god. <laughs> you ready? I guess so. Gosh. All right, let me give you... The me water a, is nice. Give me a little taste. Oh my god. Oh, it's not a taste. Ready? Yeah. yeah there you go. There we go. All right, well... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm kind of cleaner. I feel like I just, I was standing in a mud pit the whole time. It's kind of hard to get over. So we're obviously kind of getting back into van life after backpacking overseas for the last two, three months. We wanted to give one final budget update for our overseas trip. If you remember at the beginning of our Europe trip, we set a budget of $100 a day, and that would be to include everything, food, transportation, and accommodations. For two people. Yeah, and we stuck to that, to the T up until the second month and that's when we decided to go to Switzerland and we were paying $150 a night for shared hostels. So the final cost that we spent in Europe per day was a little bit more than $100. It was a total of $115 a day on average. Yeah. I think for the first like six weeks we really stuck to it pretty well pretty much up until we left Hungary and went to Austria and then we went to Switzerland. But it was worth it. We ended up cutting our trip a little bit shorter because our overall budget needed to stay about the same because we're not made of money. So we just cut a few weeks off the trip to go to some really amazing places and that brought up our average a little. But $100 a day in Europe is possible. It's just, uh, it depends where you go. And thank you so much to everyone that reached out wanting to um, help us with the budget. It was not that we necessarily couldn't afford to travel overseas, but it was that we like to challenge ourselves and we wanted to stick to a budget and show you guys that you could do it for $50 a person. And that was kind of the motivation of it. But like Natalie said, we wanted to boost the budget at the end to enjoy the last week or so. So all that being said, we're obviously transitioning back into van life and traveling around the US. Um, and we're kind of at a loss for what our big goal is because we've traveled around the US before for a couple of years. Um, there's obviously things that we're really excited to go do in the future, but we're just not exactly sure what our overarching purpose is going to be for these next few months. And that's the other thing is that we are much more caught up now than we were in Europe. In Europe, we were a couple weeks ahead of filming, and so um, what you guys saw was a few weeks delayed. What we're filming right now, you guys are going to see two days from now. If I can edit it all in time, this is going to be kind of a struggle. <laughs> So seriously, let us know if there's anything that you want to see us do. Um, we're in the Utah area 
and we do have plans to go down south uh, like early next year. So we kind of want to stay in the area, but like we are up for anything at this point. I think we're feeling pretty good about coming back to the van. We're excited to have the freedom again to go wherever without having to purchase a train or bus ticket. So we're really excited about that and we'd love to hear your thoughts on it. Leave it in the comments, whatever you want to see from us. Just kind of a weird spot for a heart to heart, but thank you for listening. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, the tears falling over. <laughs>